Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well and staying safe. We want to chat with you today a little bit about um, mucosal immunity, which we talked about in the first talk, as it relates to the gut. So if you haven't heard the first talk yet, you might want to go back and listen to that later. In the initial talk, I talked about the importance of secretory IgA and mucosal immunity and how the lining of the mu mucosal tissues of the body, the, the, the nasal passageways, the intestinal tract, the respiratory tract, the vaginal tract, the urinary tract, all these lining or mucosal tissues are protected against viruses, bacteria, yeast, and you know, parasites, all these bugs that can invade us by this stuff called secretory IgA. And so in the general naturopathic principles that have been, you know, I was taught 30 years ago, have been going on for hundreds of years, the, the idea is that mucosal immunity or this this barrier that protects us against invading organisms is super important and we want to protect that and keep it strong. And we think about the mucosal tissues now in the era of a, a respiratory virus, right, in terms of the nasal passageways and the mouth and the throat and making sure that those areas are really strong. But, you know, in a general naturopathic theory, extends also out to the intestinal tract lining and the mucosal tissues of the digestive tract. And one of the primary reasons for that is because the gut lining is just big, right? It's a lot of space there. And it takes up, I think that the small intestines like got the surface area of a tennis court or something, right? It's a huge amount of space kind of smushed into these little tubes. And the um, there's a lot of mucosal lining tissue there and around 60 percent of your entire immune system is centered in your gut and so if there's irritation or damage to the gut immune response that has a systemic effect and that is probably the the most fundamental concept of functional medicine in my mind is that the digestive tract is the mother of the rest of the body the digestive tract feeds the body right so feeds your nervous system your cardiovascular system your immune system is literally in the gut and that in functional medicine, you know, 101, what we all learn is that if a person has a gut problem, they're going to have an immune problem. They're going to have a cardiovascular problem. They might end up with, you know, a problem with their blood sugar or joint pain, which stems from, uh, you know, the gut issue in the first place. And so in order to entirely strengthen and and beef up your immune system, you have to address the fact that 60% of it's in the gut, and you have to strengthen the mucosal tissues in the digestive tract lining to have a really robust immune response. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, and so we're kind of making these talks a little more informal. I'm going to show you some lab work. I'm going to show you some research studies so we can just kind of think about this as a group and, and wonder why my digestive tract, you know, the question really is why is my digestive tract even related to any of this, you know, and how is it that there are these good bacteria in the gut that are the, you know, primary, in some ways, source of defense against bad bacteria, viruses, and parasites, and all the things that can go on. So, um, you know, first of all, I always want to talk about food and what are the practical things that you can do dietarily. So, what you don't want, what you want to do is feed your microbiome and good bacteria, and what you don't want to do is inflame and damage your gut lining, because that, damages the mucosal response, and you're, what you're damaging is your immune system. So if you drink a lot of alcohol, eat a lot of sugar, eat um, just you know pro-inflammatory junky foods that are processed foods, you're going to be damaging your immune system every time, time you take a bite of something like that. And you know every time you take a bite of food, you really got the choice there. Is this a pro-inflammatory food that's going to mess up my gut and my immunity, or is this an anti-inflammatory food that's protective? So what are the super, super anti-inflammatory foods? And the number one, probably all-time anti-inflammatory thing that you could consume um, is turmeric or curcumin. Massively powerful. Ginger's up there too. Many of the spices that we eat, oregano, basil, cinnamon, all these things have huge antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effects. And it's not that complicated. You have a bowl of oatmeal, you put a little cinnamon on it, right? And you're getting an anti-inflammatory effect that's going to be stimulating and improving your immune system. If you have a ton of sugar, like a, I don't know, what do people eat for breakfast? Like a, a donut or two donuts for breakfast, that's going to have an inflammatory immune destructive effect. 
Um, if you really want to get into it, you can read some of those old books like Sugar Blues and Lick the Sugar Habit, and they talk all about how damaging sugar is for your immune system. And part of the way that that's modulated is because it is an inflammatory trigger that's going to affect your digestive tract. So a lot of this is within our control. And of course, you not only want to not damage the gut, but you want to encourage the microbiome to grow out and be healthy. And that's done with what we call prebiotic containing foods. And we can do also buy prebiotic supplements, but it's probably easier to just eat a piece of asparagus or have some, you know, black bean soup than it is to take a bunch of supplements that are prebiotics. Now, if you're kind of behind the ball on this and your gut's not doing that great, you know, food is going to still be the primary treatment, but you can accelerate the repair process by using probiotic or prebiotic supplements to help balance out your microbiome. And the probiotics are a little dicey. I can show you some more detail on that in a minute, but prebiotics are guaranteed. Any human being on the planet can use prebiotics from foods or, you know, that's going to be fiber from foods. And you can just Google um, prebiotic containing foods and you'll get a, a nice little list. I don't have to bore you with the details on that, but um, that'll feed your good or healthy microbiome, right? And then probiotics, you can see with some of the labs here, we're going to look at in a minute that there's some uh, different ways you can do probiotics. If you do the testing, you can get really specific sometimes. Um, and so here's a GI effects test. This was from a lab company called Genova Diagnostics. Um, I run this on patients all the time. If you're interested in becoming a patient, you can sign up. We take phone patients and you can talk with uh, my office about that. That's at kalishwellness.com. And let's look at, this is kind of complicated, but let's look at the important part first. So this is really cool. You can measure this stuff, you guys. So here you can see on the test, it says commensal bacteria by PCR. These are the normal or healthy bacteria that should be present. And they have really complicated names and there's a lot of them. In fact, there's probably trillions of them and there's only 24 on this page, but you know, there's more than we could ever count, right? Um, but we're gonna focus on one of them today just because uh, that seems a little easier than trying to talk about trillions of organisms. And the one we want to talk about specifically is called Acromancia mucinophila, or mucinophilia, some people pronounce it, acromancia mucinophila. And you can measure if this is at a good level or if it's low. If it's low, you're in trouble. If it's at a good level, you're, you know, there's one plus in the plus column for your immune system. Acromancia mucinophila, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Again, there's all these other organisms you can measure. And as I was kind of alluding to the, a moment ago, with some of these uh, probiotics, you can actually measure um, the more popular probiotics, I'll just show you here. Uh, you can measure lactobacillus levels in your uh, gut. And if those are low, like this person's, then lo and behold, a lactobacillus probiotic would help a lot. Okay, so that's kind of cool to know. And then there's another um, famous probiotic that's in a lot of supplements, bifidobacterium. Okay, if your bifo bifidobacterium are low, then you can take bifido in a probiotic. And this person, could take one that has lactobacillus and bifido and it would improve their microbiome because both those markers are quite low. So that's a way to get really specific about probiotics. Um, you can also just guess, I, I suppose, which is what a lot, a lot of people do. Um, and there are also these spore-based organisms that are really good. There's a lot of new things coming out all the time with probiotics, so you have a lot of options there. If you're not doing the labs, you can take something that's more generic. If you're doing the labs, sometimes you can get kind of specific and get focused. Uh, okay, so I just want to skip around here and talk a little bit about some other things. I prepared a little document here. And you know, what are we really talking about? And I want to go through, again, these are research studies that I've just been looking at lately that will describe some of the things that we're looking at. And uh, let me show you here a little schematic of your gut. And this is crazy, you guys, that this actually happens. When I first learned about this, I was like, there's no way. This is really true, but it's true. So here are the gut bacteria, okay? These little green guys. That's the gut bacteria, the good ones, right? Here are your immune cells, like your T cells. And they have these complicated names, like IL-22 and T-regs and TH-17 and 
gosh knows what else, you know, there's like a million different names. But basically that's your immune system, right? Let me blow this up so you can see a little bit bigger. And all right, here's the crazy part is that these immune cells, these are in your body, right? This is your intestinal lining here. So this is this is a stool that's passing through, your food that's passing through, and this over here is the immune system. Your immune cells, they're hunkered down, they're sitting inside your body. But guess what? They're under direct regulation and control. You see these green arrows? By the gut bacteria. It is like a science fiction movie. You see here this B. fragilis? That's a gut bacteria. It has a direct control mechanism that penetrates right through your gut lining and tells your T cells what to do. That's crazy that that's happening. Just think how crazy that is. You, I'm, let me say this again. These are your immune cells inside your body down here. Treg, Th17, IL, bloody, bloody, blah, right? They have these complicated names. And these immune cells that are fighting everything and the bad stuff inside your body, right? These days, everyone's worried about viruses, but it could also be bacteria and parasites and other bad bugs. These immune cells that fight bad bugs are under direct control of the gut bacteria in the microbiome. Okay, that arrow there is saying that gut bacteria makes this stuff called PSA, and that's the signal that your immune cells respond to. That's crazy town. In other words, a lot of these immune cells are just going to sit around and not know what to do unless they're told what to do by the good gut bacteria. That's the situation that we're in. You protect your good gut bacteria, they signal your immune cells in your body what to do. So when you eat a probiotic containing food or a prebiotic containing food, right, like some kimchi or some sauerkraut has probiotics or yogurt or or miso soup that has probiotics, or if you eat a prebiotic containing food that has some good quality fiber in it, like beans, that's going to feed the microbiome, it's the fuel supply for the microbiome, and that in turn regulates the immune system inside your body. That's how crazy this is. You think the immune cells would be telling you, you know, would have their own independent say in things, but they're regulated by our microbiome. Okay, and if you don't believe me, Let's look at some articles here, because when I first learned this, I was just like, that is not possible. Who would have ever thought of that? Okay, so number one, here's, and this is just random studies that I pulled up. Um, all right, so let's see here. Gut microbiota. Microbiota is another name for microbiome, so there's slightly different scientific terms, but it's gut bacteria, regulation of T cells. It's what we just saw a picture of. Your gut bacteria regulate T cells. And let's just read this abstract here. This is from the uh, Annals of Something Immunology, uh, Annual Review of Immunology, something like that. This is a fancy journal, right? The intestinal microbiota play a crucial role in influencing the development of host immunity. That's you. Okay, so your gut bacteria play a crucial role and developing your immune system. And in turn, the immune system also acts to regulate the microbiota through intestinal barrier maintenance and immune exclusion. Normally, these interactions are homeostatic. That means that they balance out, tightly controlled, and organized by both innate and adaptive immune responses. Okay? So what they're saying here, again, is that your microbiome, the gut bacteria, and your immune cells are impacting one another. Your gut bacteria tell your immune cells to do stuff, your immune cells tell your gut bacteria what to do, and they balance each, you know, this is sort of dance or balance or harmony in a healthy person. Okay, again, here's the image. Your gut bacteria, these little arrows are, you know, directing and controlling your immune cells. And then in turn, the immune cells are sending signals back out to the gut bacteria. It's a two-way street. So here they're showing some of these cells directing out, right? Uh, the immune cells directing messages out, you can see here, and then these incoming messages into your body from the gut bacteria, regulating your immune cells. All right, let's look at a couple other studies. You can kind of see where this is headed. Uh, this is from the journal Nature, very well-known scientific journal. Demystifying the manipulation of host immunity, that's your body, metabolism, 
and forget about tumors, we're not talking about cancer, but they're also talking about extraintestinal tumors. So demystifying the manipulation of your immune system and your metabolism. Your metabolism refers to how you're burning fuel, right? The trillions of microorganisms in the gut microbiome have attracted much attention, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, where's a good part here? We summarize the latest evidence on the involvement of the gut microbiome in host immunity and metabolism. So not only do these gut bacteria help control and regulate immune function, but they also regulate, you know, how well you burn body fat, basically, and how well your metabolism is working. And they talk about the effects of the microbiome on cancers as well, and the immune response. So uh, they're going to review that in this article. And so again, we think about it, you know, if you have... Uh, if you, we're not really talking about cancer today, but you know, regular, you know, improving cancer, reducing the risk of cancer has a lot to do, with, obviously, with your immune system as well. So they're going to talk about that in this article, and then strategies to modulate the gut microbiome and future areas of research. Right. So this is something that's in all the medical journals all the time. You see this stuff now. Now here's my favorite bug, one of the best scientific journals in the world called Science. Right. Acromantia mucinophila induces intestinal adaptive immune responses during homeostasis. So they're saying this acromantia bug helps your intestinal immune response, right? It induces it, it creates it, it builds it. Context shapes anti-commensal immunity. The gut bacterium acromantia is associated with protection from obesity. Now, that's a nice thing. Enhanced wound healing, pretty important anti-tumor responses, right, right right back to the cancer issue from the previous article, right? Uh, and Saldo et al. found that this microbe induces antigen-specific immunoglobulins, IgG1, antibodies generated by B cells with CD4 T cells help, blah, 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 right? So again, we're talking about this gut bug triggering these various aspects of the immune system, okay? Crazy that this happens. And remember, we're like, what does that really mean abstractly? We don't really know, it's kind of complicated. We can measure acromancia on a stool test. It's called a GIFX test. And if that's low, there are nutritional strategies, diet strategies, even some herbs that will increase acromancia. And this research study I just read the other day on berberine increasing acromancia. You can take an herb to bring it up. You can eat some beans and bring it up. There's lots of ways you can correct these microbiome imbalances. Crazy, isn't it? But these are mainstream journals. We're not talking about some guy at the health food store. Like when I was in college, you know, it was like I wore Birkenstocks, I ate sprouts, and I was really into this stuff. But those days are over, you know. This is like mainstream now. Now here's just another kind of schematic about the microbiome. So here in the middle is your intestinal tract. And then what does it do? The microbiome, it protects against pathogens, right? That's the bad guys, virus, bacteria, yeast, parasites, etc. The microbiome also helps make vitamins like vitamin K, vitamin B12. It is important in immune system development, we're talking about right now, right? It uh, promotes uh, intestinal angiogenesis, that's blood vessels growing, involved in fat storage, fat burning, helps with short chain fatty acid production, and it modulates your central nervous system. That's you know basically your brain. Okay, so pretty important the microbiome is. Here's another example. And you know some of these terms you can start to get familiar with. They seem a little strange at first. Once you hear them a few times, they'll sink in. Here's my favorite bug, acromantia, right? Acromantia sitting there. And then remember, it's helping to regulate all these bugs, the healthy good organisms in different ways are healthy, helping to regulate these immune cells over here that have these fancy names, IL-1, IL-6, tumor, you know, they, there's a long list of these things. There's more of them down here. But again, again, it's the same basic schematic that we're thinking about is the gut bacteria are regulating immune function and the immune system is regulating the gut bacteria. Oh, and here's the other one that we just saw, lactobacillus. Remember that was on the test? And so lactobacillus is low. You can take a lactobacillus containing probiotic. Etc. Oh, and that's actually showing the good, a healthy versus an unhealthy gut lining. Uh, well, that's kind of interesting too, but that's not what we're really talking about. But um, yeah, let's skip, skip that. Let's see, I've got a. Let me see if I got through all my slides here. Got that one. Got that one. And then we'll go back to the lab test once I cover all these. Uh, 
I think we got them all covered. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's go back to the lab. They have a little background now. You can kind of see where we're heading with all this, right? And so when you so okay, so so right off the bat, a couple of things. You can do this in different ways. You can um, use lifestyle, diet, even exercise, even being out in the sun helps the the commensal bacteria grow. Um, you can use food as the most obvious and kind of impactful way of doing it. You can use supplements that you just kind of guess about. Like I said, prebiotics are generically good if you're not getting enough from your food, enough fiber from your food. You can use probiotics. Just be a little careful. Don't take too much of one probiotic, probiotic for too long. Like, it, like that lactobacillus marker on this particular patient. Sometimes we'll get these labs back and we'll see really high lactobacillus. Let me show you that again. Uh, there it is. So if you take a lactobacillus containing probiotic for years, this number can go way up. And that's not necessarily a great thing. If you take a bifidobacter containing probiotic for years, this number can go too high. So if you have a favorite probiotic, you know, don't stay on it forever. You know, a few months, maybe six months, but you know, mix things up. You want variety uh, and diversity in the microbiome. So you don't want to just stick with one single product uh, forever. Okay, you're gonna be a little careful about that. But anyways, this test in particular measures 24 of these commensal or normal bacteria. So you can start to get a sense of what's happening with the microbiome and how is that relating to the person's immune system. And we don't have time to get into each bug, but you get the general idea, right? It's complicated. There's a lot of these organisms and we're trying to make sense of it and get a person healthy by analyzing the actual microbiome itself. So again, if you want to do it strictly with lifestyle, you're thinking about a couple classifications. One is um, fiber containing foods like beans or prebiotic containing foods like asparagus and again Google the list of prebiotic containing foods you know, Jerusalem artichoke there's a bunch right um, those provide the fiber that allow these bacteria to grow and there's another classification of foods that are called polyphenols so polyphenols are large molecular structures classic polyphenol containing thing would be like green tea uh, Resveratrol is a polyphenol. You've probably heard of um, they're, they're any blueberries, right, have polyphenols in them. So polyphenols are large molecular structures, and they cannot get across the intestinal tract lining. Most of them can't. So we can't absorb them. So when you eat your blueberries or drink your green tea, your polyphenols from there, these really powerful antioxidants that you're consuming that you know are good for you, they're actually the food supply for your intestinal bacteria, believe it or not. How crazy is that? So again, the, one of the reasons why eating blueberries is so good for you is because the polyphenols allow these good bacteria to grow out. And the same thing with foods like beans and um, grains and you know foods that have a lot of fiber in them, vegetables, obviously, you're going to have the, uh, so even something like an apple would be good, right? You're going to have um, the fiber and the and the polyphenols that stimulate the growth of the good bacteria. And in response to, especially in response to fiber, what grows out in your body or what's produced in the body are these short chain fatty acids, okay? And they have these fancy names, butyrate, acetate, propionate. Uh, the most important one is butyrate. So what happens when you eat beans or grains and you have fiber in your diet is the good bacteria are happy because that's their food. So they grow and as they grow, they dump out stuff that they don't need, you know, so they have their own little metabolic processes. They're digesting this fiber. And believe it or not, they like the fiber. For them, that's like a food supply. For us, not so much, right? It just passes through our gut. But the bacteria are like, yay, finally we got something to eat. Dan ate some beans today. They chew up that fiber, and what they spit out as a waste product are these short-chain fatty acids. And these short-chain fatty acids are massive massively powerful immune modulators. Like, you want to read about that. We don't, oh, this is like a whole nother hour I could talk about this. But just butyrate alone, um, massively, massively powerful. Uh, I've got all kinds of studies on this. I didn't really prepare these. But butyrate alone has a huge impact on modulating your um not just your gut bacteria, but your immune response, okay? So if you want to Google something later and you have a few a free minute, uh, check out butyrate. Uh, I don't know, you just type in like butyrate and immune function or something like that, and you'll see what I mean. So again, by eating fiber or taking fiber supplements, you get these short-chain fatty acids, 
and then the body starts to release butyrate. They also make butyrate in a supplement form. If you really need to do something dramatic to impact the gut immunity, you can take butyrate in a supplement form. Uh, most of the forms of butyrate that are out there on the market are not very well absorbed. They're only absorbed maybe 5 or 10%. And there's some newer forms of butyrate in a liquid that came out in, the la in 2019 that are very well absorbed. So if you do a lab and you have low butyrate and you have immune problems, not just immune problems in the gut, but immune problems anywhere in the body, then you know you want to for sure get on some butyrate for a little while and that'll fix that up pretty quick along with your diet, right? So again, we're talking about gut. Immunity, 60% of the immune system is in your gut. If the microbiome is not doing well and you don't have enough, for example, short chain fatty acids and you don't have enough butyrate, then you're going to get in serious trouble in terms of your gut immunity. And because that's a major sort of inflection point, right, for all these other immune factors, you're going to have some serious problems with your overall immune response. Uh, here's another little blurb on butyrate. This stuff is really interesting too. We probably don't have time for this, but anyways, look it up. Look up butyrate and immune function. That'll make you want to go out and eat something with fiber in it, okay? For sure, for sure. Remember, how does that work? The good gut bacteria use the fiber for food and they spit out as a waste product butyrate acetate and propionate and if on a lab test you see that your butyrate levels are low okay then it means you need the butyrate and the main solution is going to be with food but you can also take butyrate in a supplement form and again butyrate has a, a very significant immune modulating effect which is uh, I spent a couple months reading about it a little while ago it's pretty phenomenal what it actually does uh, let's see I think I have some, here we go. Well, this is kind of sciencey. Anyways, it's kind of sciencey. Let me get into it, but you should see this stuff so you actually know a little bit. Let me just show you. Um, I actually find this stuff kind of interesting. Short chain fatty acids also help protect epithelial cells by modulating oxidative stress and immune mediators, immune mediators, including prostaglandins and cytokines. And here are the fancy names, including TNF, uh, alpha, IL-6, IL-10, right? And then transcription factor, NF-kappa beta. So the NF-kappa B. And so, you know, th this is like a fancy, complicated, sciencey way of saying that butyrate is super duper important times 10 for your immune function. And remember, look at this. Short chain fatty acids, like butyrate, it's the main one, it's modulating immune function, including, these are like the who's who of the immune system, prostaglandins, cytokines, these are huge factors in immune regulation. Uh, and then uh, IL-6, IL-10, right? All these are, when you look at these diagrams and you see about what is my immune system made up of, this is it. Okay, and that's modulated and mediated by short chain fatty acids. It's not like a random kind of thing. This is like how your body actually works, right? It's like fundamental physiology of the system. So when you're looking at a low butyrate, you're looking at an immune system that has no guidance, right? You're looking at an immune system that has no mechanisms to control it properly. And if that's happening in your gut, it sets you up for a very weak response in other parts of the body. Not that I'm totally obsessed with watching TV shows about history and battles and stuff, but like if you look at, um, I don't know, like the Romans and how they fought the Gauls all those years, right? For like, a, I think for a couple hundred years, these two people, these two groups of people were fighting each other, right? It's crazy. They just kept fighting and fighting. And eventually, obviously the Romans kind of went away and they fell apart. But for a long time, I don't know, hundreds of years, the Romans were just constantly destroying everybody. And, you know, one of the things when you, when you think about battles is that, if you have, let's say the Romans are fighting the Gauls and they're lined up against each other in, you know, somewhere in France or whatever. And um, if there's a really weak point in the Gauls line, defensive line, right? Then the Romans just set in their cavalry and crush them and they'll come around from behind and destroy them, right? So the human body is set up exactly the same. If your 
gut immunity is weak, your mucosal immunity is weak, the whole system is down, right? And then you get exposed to a virus or a bacteria or a parasite, wherever that is happening in other parts of the body, it could be a lung infection, it could be a sinus infection, it could be a vaginal yeast infection, the mucosal tissues are going to be weak. And if that central control point in the gut in terms of is weak and the gut immunity is weak, you're going to be really susceptible to picking up infections in other parts of the body. And that is like a foundational principle of naturopathic medicine and functional medicine. Okay. Let me just show you some other features of the lab here so you can see how cool this stuff is. Um, so again, the results are looking for the gut microbiome, is it imbalanced or not? And we'll just look at the uh, microbiome factors on here, okay? Because there's a lot of other stuff that we're not talking about. Um, oh, here, how cool is that? Look, see, immune suppression, inflammation, right? They're trying to show you how your gut function is related to immune function, just with that. And then this is uh, commensal abundance. These are the good bacteria. They rate you as to where you are with that whole summary of those good bacteria. And then they show you these other markers here, like the one I think especially is important for what we're talking about today is butyrate, and how butyrate helps regulate immune function. Remember, butyrate's controlling those immune cells, just like acromancia is regulating immune cells. It's a very very key components of your immune system. And these are the, again, these are not peripheral parts of the immune system. These are like the immune system for real, okay, that's regulated by these cells. And that's why there's so much interest in the microbiome right now in terms of research, because people are trying to figure out how important the gut is. And then remember, you can also test individual organisms like acromancia. There's a bunch of other ones on here that are cool, but that one's for sure my favorite. And, you know, so it's named for what it does, mucin, Philia, so it's philia love like uh, philadelphia is the city of love like philia is like love and mucin it's a lover of mucin so acromantia is out there in your gut lining and it's just chomping along outside the gut lining and it chews up the mucin or mucus in the gut lining that's what it uses for food <laughs> that's kind of crazy right dude, 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 dude. but it's like a, it's like having the best gardener in the world that's maintaining a yard right it's maintaining the health and function of your gut lining, and all you need to do is feed it with prebiotic-containing foods, fiber-containing foods, polyphenol-containing foods, that's your blueberries, right, and your green teas, and your spices, and all the things that have polyphenols, and then the fiber-containing foods, which you all know the best kind of fiber is beans, the best beans are usually lentils, but you can have any kind of bean that you want, and then um, prebiotic, uh, probiotic-containing foods, right? Like your your fermented foods, basically. That's how you maintain all this. And remember, the big take-home thought here before I wrap up is that every bite of food that you consume is either going to be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. It's either going to stimulate and improve your immune function or reduce it. And so the bottom line is you can't be healthy unless you're eating well. If you're, you know stuck and you're eating well or you're just frustrated and you're not getting healthy check out Kalis wellness you can start here click on this button that says start here you can talk to our health coach and see if it's an appropriate fit for you to start to do some of these labs like the gi effects and kind of tie it back to the, the and then i'll wrap up in one minute okay um last class i talked about last session i talked about secretory iga and how stress mediates cortisol and how that's related to immunity so now i want to just kind of go full circle and i'll show you here uh, i have a diagram on this that i use for students in my classes here so the adrenal hormones that we talked about here that's a better one when we're stressed, death, divorce, childbirth, overwork, all these things happen, we're stressed, our secretory IgA gets screwed up, weakens our immune response, then the GI problems start to develop that we're talking about today. So stress is usually the initiator, the microbiome starts to collapse, and then we can build up a high level of toxins. So when we're doing the lab testing in my practice, we test and correct the stress response, we test and correct the microbiome, and then we look at detox pathways, okay? We do that all through labs. I'm gonna talk about um, the most complicated and amazing lab in the upcoming session. It's called an ion panel, and we're gonna look at all the nutrients that relate to immune function. So we'll analyze each nutrient that's important for immune function, and I'll show you what it does and how it relates to the lab.
Okay, and if you're interested in becoming a patient, you can go to Kalish Wellness and click on the Start Here button. And I'm going to wrap it up for now. There's a couple of questions that came in. And so um, let me answer these. Is it true most biotic, probiotics do not survive in the stomach and cannot make it to the intestine? Yeah, it's true. It's not like you swallow the probiotic and then those exact bacteria end up growing in your large intestine miles away. Because what? They have to go through this pit of destruction called your stomach, right? So all this stomach acid, they're going to get chewed up. Then they hit your small intestine and your gallbladder is going to crank out a ton of bile and the bile is massively destructive to microorganisms like bacteria, right? So there's like two hits already. And then you're going through the intestinal tract and there's all kinds of bacteria growing there, right? So it's not like you take a probiotic and then it magically appears in your in your digestive tract. However, we do see, like I just showed you, if you take lactobacillus for a while, you'll see patient, patients on labs that have really high lactobacillus. So there's some of it getting in. And I think what they think now is that there's some of the organisms get in. If you take them for long enough, you can see that on the lab. So we know they're getting in because you see these super high lactobacillus levels and the person is taking lactobacillus. So there is some effect that's direct, but it's mo moderate, I think. The main effect of the probiotics is that they're modulating and impacting the gut. Maybe they're impacting the gut pH levels, acid alkaline balance. Maybe they're you know modulating other organisms. I don't think anyone really understands why probiotic pills or capsules work so well, but they do work for a lot of people. Okay, But not as well as diet. Um, uh, are whole grains uh, full of butyrates? What is the best source of fiber? Yeah, so butyrate is made, well, let's, let's think about it. So that you eat um, a grain or a vegetable or beans or something that has a good quality of fiber in it. And that fiber hits your intestinal tract, right? And then the bacteria chew up the fiber. And as they're breaking down the fiber, they dump out and excrete these short chain fatty acids. So they don't want the fat, they just dump it out. They can't metabolize it or use it. It's their waste product, okay? And um, that butyrate then is the one that really helps modulate and control your immune system. So absolutely, now some people are, um, some people can't handle grains. I mean, some people get sick if they eat any grains. So don't eat grains if that happens, you know? Some people get sick if they eat gluten, so you clearly don't want to eat a gluten. But most people can handle non-gluten grains, and some people can even handle gluten, um, just depending on how healthy you are and what kind of gluten you're talking about, where you live, you know? Um, so you can absolutely do this with grains, but not everybody handles grains. You have to be a little bit careful. Uh, what does it mean if you have very high acetate levels and low butyrate? That means that you need to basically take butyrate, and that should balance it out, okay, in terms of supplement. Um, oh, and the lab that does this is called Genova. That's a GI effects. Um, is there a discount if the whole family wants to sign up? Um, yeah, usually well, I, I'll work out something. So I work with a lot of families. Um, and um, usually we, well, there's a, contact the office, Magdalena, if you want to sign up and uh, we'll, we'll work out something um, in terms of, you know, it's not really a volume discount, but it's more like I can work with the whole family at the same time. So it's not the same amount of money as if you signed up each person individually. Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you stay safe out there. I'm going to wrap up for now. We're going to come back and um, do this again next week. And I'm going to talk about nutrients that are essential for immune function, how you can get them in your diet and from food and stuff, and then how you can test for them. Okay, stay safe out there, folks. We'll talk again soon. Thanks.